Well, hello there. Master Hellish here, and welcome to our Thursday night Kerbal Space Program live stream. Hello, everybody. I hope you're doing well. As you can see in the bottom corner there, the gameplay will be starting in about 13 minutes. I can see Jack Mac and Above the Line are already here, raring to go with some rescue missions. Uh, they're watching on YouTube. We are, of course, live on multiple platforms, as we are usually are at the moment. Today, I decided to make the black background slightly blue. Don't know if you can tell the difference. Maybe I should turn it off for a moment and show you what it's normally like. And then you can tell me if you like it or whether you think it's not good. So if I just go on my phone, go into the lights... That's normally what we're like. That's normally what the background's like in here. And then, that's with the blue. So you'll have to let me know what you think. Give it a try. Jack Mac likes the colour background. I do, I do. It gives it a bit of a kind of a matty feel. And actually, it probably would look a little bit more backgroundy if it wasn't for the fact I've got a big black um item of clothing hanging on a tripod over here so maybe maybe i should sort that out yeah there we go let's see what that looks like uh, see you see the rest of the room now <laughs> that would there's a little bit more there's a little bit more above the line said already noticed wow okay cool hey brandon welcome to the stream uh hey i know there's no more commands that's right we've i th we think we've turned them all off now uh but there is a link to he but there is a link to it on hellish plates it's try red what no 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 we won't go with red no i think i don't think red's the right color no 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 no, 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 no i don't think red's the thing um yeah hellish places actually we need to remove the links to the command page uh, but we're kind of in a transition period with all the tools and things that are going on. We've got the wheel and we've got the uh, the new timer and um, uh, well, so we've got the, the giveaways and all that sort of thing. But there's still some of the old stuff around. Uh, it's all a work in progress. And uh, hopefully, I'm hoping to have absolutely everything done before the big charity festive live stream at the end of the year. Now, that would... Um, that would be interesting to try and get uh, to to try and get all the YouTube stuff sorted out by then. Maybe I will. Maybe I won't. Wondering if there is a hellish places link. Yes, yes, there is. Uh, if you go to the hellish places page, it tells you the link in your web browser. Unless I've misunderstood your question. Um, let's have a look. So if I go into my website, go to Hellish Places in the menu, yeah, masterhellish.net forward slash Hellish Places. Is that what you're talking about? Because it's there. Uh, streaming Commands and Loyalty Store is currently still on the streaming places, but we're not really using that at the moment. Hey, DJ Egg, welcome to the stream. Uh, tonight's probably going to be your last chance to have any input on what you think maybe we should do on Saturday's stream. Is there one to post in the chat for people? Yes. Masterhellish.net forward slash Hellish Places. That's it. That, that, I mean, I've got a button that does it. Uh, well, I say that it does it. it. It does it in Twitch chat. I don't know if it works in... Actually, I'm not sure if that works anymore. Yeah, that doesn't work anymore. We turned that off as well, didn't we? There's a lot of things we've turned off. <laughs> there are new commands coming soon. And actually, I'm working on a way so that me and the moderators can fire it off to both Twitch and YouTube at the same time, which will be cool. Uh, yes, that's it, Egg. Hey, Michael. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Yeah, it's been... It's one of those days where I, I've i worked... Let's see, what day? So it's... On a Thursday, I start work at half past seven. So I've been coding, uh, writing computer code, roughly from half past seven this morning until I finished early today. I finished at five o'clock instead of half five because it was parents' evening at the school. 
And uh, yes, uh, I spend all day racking my brains, coding, and in the evening you'd think I'd want a nice gentle rest, wouldn't you? But no, apparently we're doing rocket science. Because <laughs> that's better, isn't it? Oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> I enjoy it. I'm really enjoying the, uh, the Kerbal Space Programme. Uh, one thing for new commands is to have at least one chat game. Oh, um, I mean, we've got, like, chat games, as you're calling it, uh, on the ideas list. But at the moment, I don't think we will. Because, I, yeah, they're, they're not what really we're here for. We're here for working as a community, you know, enjoying time together as a community through this sort of interaction and the gaming. Um, the kind of random chat game things uh, are not really my sort of style. That's probably why I only had one or two of them turned on in the first place. Um, above the lines like why rest after doing something hard if you could do something harder I'm not quite sure what's harder actually uh, the coding that I do or playing Kerbal Space Program no idea <laughs> um, I think it's different I do confuse myself though um, only, only somebody like me would be like I know I'm going to do um, Kerbal I'm, I'm going to do uh, Python programming all day, and then I come down at night and think, "Oh, I'm going to make some tools for my um, for, for my streaming. What shall I do? Shall I do it in Python? Shall I do it in another language? No, let's do it in PHP, <laughs> just so that I get confused between the two." Yeah, Lego boy, it's a KSP stream tonight. It's going to be good. Do you know how I'm going to know it's going to be good? Because something can either be very wrong or very right. And either one is brilliant. <laughs> Things don't go wrong. No, they just get interesting. If you go to hellishdoor.net, there are some t-shirts available and stuff on there. And some way, sometime between now and the end of the year, I'm probably going to retire some of those designs. Bring some new ones in, maybe. We'll see. It would be nice to have one t-shirt for each of the major games that I'm into with with one of my slogans, phrases on it. Uh, we've already got... Um, this will probably work for the Kerbal Space Program one. Um, I nearly went with things don't go wrong, they just get interesting, but I felt that that was just kind of good enough, like a life slogan by itself, that that was good enough, yeah. Would you try Race to the Moon series in Minecraft modded? Probably not. Uh, the reason why I say that uh, is is that there's a big list of things I would like to do. And sometimes when I hear a suggestion like that, I think, actually, it would be nice to do that one day. But I know in my mind that that thing on would go in that list so far beneath the other things that I would never have time to get round to it. So, I, I do like modded Minecraft, but I usually come back to vanilla, because I, I can get quite bored of it. I mean, like, if it was like a mini-series, that's where I think modded Minecraft is, is the best for me. Um, but basically, yeah, there's a... The, and it's like, for example, I've never watched a single episode of Game of Thrones. It's probably something that I might like, but I just know that it's just beneath, like, down on the list... Um, that I'm never going to get to it. It's not like KSP. It's in no way like KSP. Apart from the fact there are there's a the, the there's the space theme. Um, the the gameplay is completely different. The graphics is completely different. Um, the the resources and the way that resourcing works within the game is completely different. I I, I highly disagree with that comment. <laughs> um, we I, we did actually have a fantastic shirt for a while. Maybe we'll have another fantastic shirt in the future. I'm not sure. Uh, maybe I'm trying to think of one of the phrases that would go well with my Minecraft one because I do want to do a Minecraft one, mainly because I want to buy it. <laughs> one of the main reasons I make these T-shirts is not for you. It's for me. <laughs> They're for me to have. 
Um, where, where, what, where we? Where are we going to rescue on KSP? We'll get to that. We'll get to that in a bit. Don't you? Don't you worry. We'll get to the KSP goodness very soon. Uh, right then. Uh, before we get to the KSP goodness, uh, yes, we do have a special party stream on Saturday. So please do put that down in your notebooks, diaries, sticky pads, uh, Palm Pilots, Blackberries, um, whatever technology you use. <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, it, and these these um, live streams that I do like every week start at eight o'clock UK time. That one starting at seven o'clock UK time. So whatever time you normally come to the live stream in your local time, you need to be an hour earlier. Okay. Yeah, I we, we, I like the trees, trees, trees one. It's it's not open ttd specific per se it is it is basically the open ttd one the trees 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 uh hellish ink is a little bit across the board now because i use it in many different places uh oh god there's just so many that i could do and it takes so much time and effort to modify all the designs and get everything all up and rolling and all that sort of thing and then the supplier changes the base price and I've got to go through and change every single custom price for all the different items on the store because they changed the base prices. Um, there's technical reasons for that and stuff, but yeah. Uh, I don't know if anybody uses Blackberries. I mean, if you want to, you might, be, you might even set a reminder on a Tamagotchi. There's a throwback. Funny story, I actually purchased a Tamagotchi today. For my daughter, like I said earlier in the stream, uh, it was my uh, it was parents' evening. Uh, my daughter did well, um, so as a reward for good comments at parents' evening, she got to choose a relatively cheap uh, gift for herself. She to chose a Tamagotchi. Uh, I think she's seen a friend with one and she liked it. Uh, I never actually had one. I always wanted to give it a go but never enough to go and buy one myself. And I never did. Um, but yeah, um, I purchased one for her today. So she, I'll be giving that to her tomorrow once it arrives from the internet. Right then. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure Blackberries do still exist. Yeah, it'd be interesting to pull up some stats. Uh, but we're gonna get ready and go into Kerbal Space Program. Like I said, just don't forget that stream uh, on Saturday and the streams are back to normal time next oh hang on right streams are back to normal time next week but you do need to watch out because we're changing the clocks here in the UK at the end of the month so instead of instead of me doing things in UK time and then taking one hour away and announcing it in UTC UTC and UK time will actually end up being the same time so it'll be different <laughs> But it will still be the same for you if you change your clocks at the same time. I know America doesn't. America changes their clocks, I think, two weeks either before or after we do. And, of course, there's time zones all around the world which are different. And if you want to watch a Tom Scott video on the Computer File channel about programming and time zones, it's a fantastic watch. There we go. Um... There is a YouTube, yeah, there is a YouTube uh, stream countdown. So that should be all good. Yeah, the, the, the schedules and all that sort of stuff should be all good. So don't worry about that. Right, Kerbal Space Program time. And last time we left our Kerbals uh, in two different places. One of those places was Minmus, where we had a resource gathering minor lander craft with one of our kerbals inside which was highly inadequate to fulfill its purpose it needs an upgrade it was cultivating tiny amounts of ore and we need to get i think 600 uh, and then uh, at the moon space station we had two kerbals that were waiting to go down to the moon's surface so that they could plant a flag. Now, 
the uh, the craft that landed on Minmus uh, with the Kerbal in probably doesn't have enough fuel left in it. And the craft that is at the Moon Space Station doesn't actually have a lander so they can go down to the surface. So, since last time, I've done some upgrades. Okay, now uh, I've got a, a VT of this, so we'll, we'll be able to watch this together. I think it's five minutes long, I can't remember. But basically what we needed to do was bring a lander from Kerbin to the Moon Space Station and three fuel tanker rockets. Now, I wasn't going to sit here and make you guys watch me do the same trip four times. So here's a little video. So while this is a video, this is still me live, and this is the first of the four rockets. You can see it taking off from the launch pad and then uh, we this one has some side boosters because I decided to put a lot of fuel in it um, which um, we managed to get up quite high over Kerbin before the uh, first stage was depleted and you saw there there was an explosion when the second stage lit its engines up we'll find out what that explosion was in a bit but the second stage uh, deployed its solar panels and uh, and went on quite nicely and the first stage I had no control over because the explosion was actually the control module so I couldn't open the parachutes and it splashed into the ocean anyway the second stage managed to burn on okay burned on got an intercept with the moon and we're just going to do what we normally do when we're heading to the moon with a, a TR-10 second stage we're just going to get it all nicely adjusted so that we can Come in nice and close and find the space station. There we go. Just walk to that point. We've got quite lucky with our intersections with the moon recently. It's always been uh, quite nice and easy to, to get those intersections. This, this is a uh, TR-10, which is the Starship look-alike. And it is going to the moon, yes. And this one's the fuel variant, so instead of having uh, like a lander on the top or room for Kerbals to be inside, it's just got another tank. It's just got another tank on the top. There it is. There it is close up in the sunlight. Now all of these video clips, nearly all of them were in the dark. So I actually ran it through some enhancing. And you can see the, uh, the actual space station in the background there. So I'm trying to uh, just adjust our velocity to kind of uh, trim out the difference between the two orbits and once we get a bit closer we get ready to dock up so from here you can see I'm trying to dock and on the bottom right hand side of the screen there you can see that's the TR-10 second stage that the um, that the R2 Kerbals are inside and on the other side you can see there's a lander there now because I put the lander there and then realized I wasn't recording. This was probably my worst docking ever. I nearly smashed a solar panel off. So this view here, this is an enhanced view. Imagine how dark it would be if it wasn't. Look at the how bright the nav ball is. It's not normally that bright. Uh, but I think this was the second or third attempt. I, I'd really just not done docking very well. And this is the first time I'd used the docking adapter that what, that had the little bits that close and open on the front. You can just see the, uh, the door flanges there. So that was the first of the three vessels um, docked up to the station. The fuel ones. There is the second one coming in. And I'm not going to show you the launch and the... And the um, stage separation and all of that sort of thing because it was the same apart from for the second and third one I didn't blow up the um, the control module so I was actually able to recover the boosters so that's two fuel vessels and then there just managed to get the last the third one docked in so there we go folks we now have our Kerbals in a TR10 second stage 
three fuelers and the lander. Isn't that fantastic? Oh, you're talking about one with no flaps? They've all got flaps, Lego boy. I'm pretty sure they've all got flaps. So uh, the game is now loaded. And I'm going to resume the same saved game. And we can go live over to the moon where I think it is it Wizard Brandon and somebody else. Let's do that. Let's just move into Kerbal Space Program. We don't need the controller on the screen at the minute. So if we go um, Moon Space Station and fly. We'll be able to find. Here we go. So, I oh one other thing that I did is I went around and just terminated the various different bits of junk that was lying around. We had a couple of pieces of junk lying around on Minmus. Uh, we had a piece of junk orbiting the moon. I just terminated them and got rid of them. So we have our TR10 with Wizard Brandon and Jesse Kaboom inside. The main core of the space station, there's a lander down here. There's the tug vessel. The tug vessel was just in orbit nearby, so I brought that back as well. And uh, and then there's the three fueling vessels. Now, I've already transferred the fuel because I needed to know how many fueling vessels I needed. Uh, so the lander is full of fuel. The TR2 second stage is completely full of fuel at the moment. And we've also got this one. And what's so a one and a half of these orange containers with fuel in as well. Uh, so that's all what's going on there. So the next thing we need to do is actually go to the surface of hang on a second the game's flashing for me it's only flashing on my screen though hmm. okay it seems fine now don't know what was going on so what we need to do now is decide whether we're going to send Brandon Jesse or Brandon and Jesse down to the surface um, should we use the wheel should we use the wheel? Does one of the moderators want to get a, a wheel up and running? Get a wheel up and running. One of the moderators. We're going to either have Brandon, Jesse, or both. They're the options that we're going to have on the wheel. Um, this is more of a test of the wheel than anything else. Thank you, Egg. Um, you, di you didn't see the flaps on one of them. They've all got flaps. The idea is, is in theory, all of them can go back and we can recover the money. Um, and KSP, is this going to be like the Artemis program? Um, I suppose in some ways it is. I mean, you're drawing a lot of similarities to real life stuff where this is just a space station built out of parts that we've needed. Uh, there's, there's not much more to say about that. The moon space station and the Kerbin space station are near identical. Um... And the Minma station is nowhere near as good because I didn't think I'd be doing much there. Are they right? Okay, so we've got one scientist and one engineer. There's no pilots, but the uh, lander itself does. If we open up this, the the center of the lander, there is a probe core in there, so we can control the vessel with the probe core. There we go. Now, there are some changes to the uh, TR-10 uh, second stage, actually. Um, I removed the other two engines on the second stage because having those um, side boosters um, meant that the first stage got further, which meant the second stage got further, which meant I didn't need them. So that's uh, excess mass that I got rid of. Um, you want a link to the manager? Yeah, I will get a link to the manager for you. I, that should do it, Egg. Yeah, 
yeah that did it you just need to be logged in i'm not um and then i th i think one of them i can't remember which one it is yeah i put a little blue flashing blinking light on the side because i thought that might be nice <laughs> so i have made a few small modifications to the tr 10 second stage we definitely need to give it a proper name okay so let's um we're going to get ready to go down to the surface we're not going down to the surface in the tr10 we're going to go down in the surface in the actual lander this lander is a, a clone of one i used previously but um but i just took all the science off it because we don't care about science on the landers anymore we've got a science base okay so thank you much very much to dj egg let's get uh, a selection Right, who's it going to be? Who's going down to the surface of the moon? Jesse Kaboom. Just Jesse's going down. So if something goes horribly wrong, Brandon's staying alive. Um, Lego Boy, are you going to put the... Oh, Lego Boy, can you refer to the rockets as to what we've got them labelled as in the game, because it might confuse people. Uh, so I'm going to try and translate your message. Are you going to put the TR-10 second stage... What? That doesn't make sense. Are you going to put the lunar lander in the moon in the future? If you don't, I don't mind. I'm sorry, that sentence I, I, I can't follow. This lander that we've got here that stays at the space station doesn't go anywhere else it just goes down to the surface and back up again the tr uh, 10 second stage is going to go on to minmus to try and solve the problems there so jessica boom we're going to eva you and hopefully you don't die because i think you're our only engineer so we're going to let go and turn your rcs on now we don't use um, the joystick for EVAs because the controls just aren't set up for it. And we need to get into the lander which is just over here. Look at this. I love this space station. The only thing I wish I think I did differently is the monopropellant. I used loads of these little ball things on the outside because I thought it would look cool. But the problem is, is that like transferring molar propellant between tanks is a nightmare. You have to select one tank and then the other tank do the transfer, then select another one. Anyway, here we go. Get, grab, grab the lander. There we go. Board, board the lander. There we go. So, now that, I've just remembered, was completely unnecessary because you can actually just transfer people between different modules. <laughs> you can, I think you can just like click this and go transfer crew and choose somewhere else and then they get transferred um so let's just check yeah all the engines are turned off we don't want any of these ships with their engines that are attached to the space station actually um enabled uh hellish is there a viewer plus open ttd server please go and check that out on the website the list of benefits are there um, all the information is there that you need to know. Um, if you can find out the information yourself, that's brilliant. We can crack on with the live stream without me answering questions that you can see on the website. Right then. Uh, so let's now, I guess, just go down and try and plant that flag. So let's uh, disconnect from here, undock, and we'll switch to that vessel and I don't want to use oh there's no mono propellant the mono propellant tanks are empty okay quick activate the engine and try and dock again Why can't I dock? Set as target. 
Oh no. All oh, right, okay. Uh, we need monopropellant. Or do we? I don't know. Right. Detach the tug. This is why we have a tug here. Switch vessels. Quick, before it goes too far. We've got to catch it. Undock. No. Yep, this one. Right, okay, here we go. SAS on. Let's arm this bit. Right then, uh, let's try and grab this ship. If we can just point us, actually, we just need to set the target, don't we? So, uh, set as target. There we go. So, in theory, I should just be able to fly towards it. And then we could do a monopop transfer, which I didn't really want to have to do. Let's turn the engine on. Do a slight boost. Hopefully we can actually crash these two ships together without any solar panels problems. Oh, we missed. Oh, that's not good. Right, RCS on. Don't really want to... Use too much RCS. Oh my goodness, it's getting away from us. Oh, it's like a dance. Oh my goodness, right. No! Solar panel calamity! Okay, we've, we've lost some panels. And also, the lander is spinning wildly. Right, let's, let's switch the lander, and the lander and turn the SAS on, because it has got SAS. And we'll just... Turn it round towards. We set that as the target. We can't set that as the target. Brilliant. Okay. I can't see what's going on. Wrong one. Who are we now? Right, here we go. Here we go. Now that other one's got SAS, let's make our way over there. Oh, get the get the things on screen because we're using them. Right, we're heading towards it now. Hopefully this time we actually get a an actual dock.
Oh no! The other solar panel has been smashed off. Oh. New viewer plus subscriber. Fantastic. Fantastic that not a great time to read a sub. Oh, I can't believe I should have I should have folded it in. Now we're using up electrical charge. This is going to have to be repaired or replaced. Actually, the engineer could probably just move one of the solar panels over. It's not a problem. Okay, let's try again. Okay, let's try this again. Before we run out of electrical power. Here we go. That looks much better to me. I was rushing before. Okay, let's do it. Surely this has got to be a grab. What? Why is that not engaging? Control from here. That should engage. I'm confused. Why, why is my... Why is it not engaging? Which way round are we? We're, we're slowly running out of fuel. Maybe I need to do it faster. Right, we're gonna we're gonna ram the lander. If I can just get the position right. We're going to ram it with some speed. Nope, that didn't work either. I just tried to hit it harder. That didn't help. Um... <sighs> right. Electrical charge is slowly going down. Maybe we just need a much more harder hit. But also much more... Smack on. Okay. That looks like it could be on target. Let's get this bit on target. Let's turn the RCS back on. Right. No. Ah. Right, in that case, we're going to control from here on the docking port. I hate doing this because it uses up so much RCS. Okay, um, let's go into docking mode. The RCS is going absolutely crazy. Oh, 
all the controls have changed. What? Why is all the controls changed? I was in docking mode. I'm not in docking mode anymore. Why can't I rotate the craft? Hmm. Oh, it's because I'm controlling from... Ugh. Okay. Going to have to control from here. There we go. Do a light... Light burn. So we're going roughly towards it. Then switch to RCS and just try and do it. And then I'll I'll read the chat after we've got this docked up. <sighs> Might have to remove one of the solar panels over. Yeah. And then we'll I I think I actually brought some repair kits with me. So hopefully that'll be all right. So, for some reason, well, at least the RCS is firing in the direction I want it to now. We should be able to get these two ships to get together, but this is just a really strange docking. Um... And turn off the RCS and SAS. Right, I've got them docked. Oh my goodness. At least the uh, electricity will reload. Won't it? There we go. Let's just turn that on. Right. Let's have a look at what's going on here. Um, are you going to Mars in KSP for future? Uh, there's no Mars in KSP. Uh, new sort of viewer plus subscriber. Thank you very much for subscribing. Support to the channel is fantastic. Yeah, the um, the notification of being a new subscriber was echoey. I'll need to sort that out. I know what the problem is. I just don't know how I'm going to go about fixing it yet. We'll see. Um, you think I need to hit the lander harder? Yeah. I don't think a Kerbal death is inevitable. This is why I put docks. I should have used the dock, really, from the very beginning. Right, okay, so now we can get some of the monopropellant on the lander. So if I hold Alt, we can fill up these monopropellant tanks, or at least fill them up a bit. Uh, we should only really need monopropellant for docking maneuvers when we come back up. Have we got... Yeah, that looks like that tank's still full. Let's shut that engine down. And shut that engine down. And I will just check to see... Can we get more fuel in there? No. Right. How much is fuel's in there? We need more. This is what I meant about... Individual monopropellant balls. It's a nightmare. Um... When is SLS rocket Orion capsule going to be in the space station in KSP? That would be a mod. We're not playing modded. Uh, retract a solar panel on the lander before he goes into the space station. Don't want to knock it off. Yeah, I've got an idea about that, actually. I've got an... Uh, um, break the other panels! I'm not going to break the other panels. It's going to be fine. Right, so that's one of the um, balls filled up. Unfortunately, this is, I don't know how much monopropellant we're going to need, but I would rather fill all four balls up. And then what I'll do is I'll just leave the tug in orbit, and I'll sort that out later. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the engineer to move the solar panels so that each craft has got one good set, and then we can repair them later because we've got repair, repair stuff. Okay, and so that's that one full. Oh, these ones are smaller. Ah, these ones are smaller. That's good. 
It means that I don't have to select them multiple times to fill them up. What planets are there in KSP? Uh, go check it out. Go check it out. Look it up. Go, there's plenty of information out there about what's in the Kerbal system and all that sort of stuff. Now the good thing is, like I said, Jesse's an engineer. Which means Jesse can solve our solar panel problem. Then once that's sorted out, we can do the landing, go back to the space station, all that sort of brilliance. We've got one more ball to fill up. One more monopropellant ball. That's a good job I've got the tug. Otherwise that would have just... Fl I mean, we could have used the lander without monopropellant. It works. It's fine. It's just quite difficult. You have to get... You have to turn the craft. And you have to keep kind of like... You have to turn it and boost. Turn it and boost. Turn it and boost. And keep doing that until you are perfectly aligned with that docket port. And then just boost towards it. That's pretty much the only way you can do it without monopropellant. Anyway, uh, as soon as this transfer has happened, we will get the Kerbal out. We will get Jesse out to do fix the solar panels. I feel like doing it in the, the daylight, though, so I can see what I'm doing better rather than in, at night here. Electrical charge is just going down and down and down. Right, there we go. That's that sorted out. So if we now just fast forward just a little bit. There we go. That'll be sunrise in the moon orbit. Brilliant. The space station isn't actually far away, which is good, because it means it's not going to take me long to get the tug back. And if we EVA Jesse, and we go into construction mode... Uh, Jesse hasn't got any repair packs with him, but that's not a problem. We're going to retract these solar panels. We're going to take this solar panel. Is that finished? Operation in progress. What's the operation that's in, in progress? Is it because it's broken? Can I not move it if it's broken? Or is it because I'm, oh, I'm holding on to the thing? Let's let go. Yeah, yeah, we'll just sit here. Uh, it says repair quit kit required. Oh, it's okay. So it's broken and I can't detach it. Well, we'll have to come back sometime for that. In that case, just get on board. Let's leave the tug here. Let's turn off its lights. Turn off its SAS. Turn off absolutely everything. Undock. Uh, jet planes don't work in space because jet planes use the air as part of the way that they work. Right, there's the. Ex let's extend that solar panel. I don't think this has an antenna on it. I don't think it needs it. Electrical charge does appear to be going up. That's good. Uh, we can even uh, rotate the craft slightly. Get a better angle on our solar panels. Straight at the sun there. You can build a space plane. You just need to have other things than jet engines. Um, to do the to do the rest. Okay, so electrical charge is going up. Uh, we're heading this way around the moon. Let's get ready for a landing. So I think it'd be quite nice if we landed somewhere in the light. Uh, so we're going to point ourselves retrograde. We're going to turn the engine on, and then I'm going to throttle it up and aim for somewhere over here. Right, so we have uh, just under 3,000 meters per second of delta V. So that's a moderate amount there. We should be able to land and get back to the, to the, uh, the space station on that. Right, I, I think that will do. Uh, that's going to change... I mean, the other lander's completely gone now. 
So here we go. Jesse Kaboom is getting ready to go down. So let's get the uh, landing legs out. That's this button here where my thumb is. We'll do that now because it doesn't matter. We're in space. We could leave them out all the time if we wanted to. And I think we just need to fast forward a little bit until we're a little bit closer to where we want to be. We, we don't want to fast forward too much. And we want to stay in our retrograde. So there we go. So I don't know how quickly we can show, slow down. We're not thrust limited. Let's do a little test. Okay, so it does take us a little while to slow down. But we're still 22 kilometers up. I think we can afford to wait just a little bit. Probably somewhere around here. It seems relatively flat compared to other areas. Let's just change that horizontal velocity a little bit. You can see here it's moving in. We need to get rid of both the horizontal and vertical velocities. No good just boosting in one direction. And you can see it's taken us some time to get rid of a good deal of our uh, um, movement there. And I don't want to come in too fast. So we're 12 kilometers up. Uh, that looks pretty good. I'm just aware that it takes a long time to slow down in this ship. Also, there's not a massive amount of fuel left. But also, the less fuel there is, the lighter it is, the more it moves. So we're under 10 kilometers now. So I probably want to be under 100 meters per second, I reckon. Yeah. Let's keep that burning going. Uh, there we go. We're 100 meters per second now. There's 90. 90 meters per second. Oh, yeah, uh, and it's showing surface speed now. Don't worry, it just changed. Ideally, I want to miss this crater. I'm aiming for this big space here. Um, which it looks like I am going to land in. Okay, we're under 700 now. Uh, sorry, 7,000. We are starting to speed up a little bit, but I don't want to slow down too much too quick. Okay. Let's get rid of some of that speed. Okay. We're under 5,000 now, so I want to be going to about 50 meters per second. So I'm just putting a bit more on the engine there. Don't want to come at that. We can just see the shadow. There. There's the shadow coming in. We're under 50 meters per second. Fuel is looking good, actually. We've got more than half fuel, so I'm happy just to coast it down a little bit. We'll get to 20 meters per second-ish, maybe, and just then dial back. I'd rather take it easy, you know? Thank you very much, Egg. Yes, it does. If you're interested in any of the uh, the hardware that I'm using, including including the computer and stuff, it is on my about page on the website. It's the Thrustmaster Hostess, Yes. Right. So let's have a look. We're still going about twenty meters per second, and we're still two kilometers up. I'm tempted to la I'll let it just go a little bit faster, just because I'm getting impatient. Um, there's thirty. We'll let it get up to 40 and then we'll slow back down again. There's there's nearly 40. Oh, I wonder if there's a thing to bring any moon rock back. 
Right, let's get the camera in a good angle to see if we can capture this. We're under a thousand now, so I want to dial that speed back. 700. Yeah, we, we need to get this down. There we are. We're at 10 meters per second now. Wouldn't be the end of the world if we touch the surface at 10 meters per second. I mean, it probably wouldn't be the best landing, and we might break something. But I don't think our Kerbal would die. I'm actually letting a little bit of speed come back. 400 meters to go. Getting ready with the stability assist, because I want that to just... I'm going to switch from retro to stable now. So if there is any sideward movement, we're not going to try and get rid of it. We're just going to let it go. 200. 10 meters per second. One thirty eight meters per second. One hundred seven point two meters per second. Eighty, seventy, sixty, fifty. Hands free landing. And of course, the hands to turn the engines off. But yes, there we go. Congratulations, me. Jesse didn't die. Um, no, we no we. It, this is just hellish ink. Hellish ink, the Rocket Space Agency or whatever it is. No relation. We're not going to affiliate ourselves with any real life space agencies. So that's us. We're down. Uh, the reason why we came here is to plant a flag. So hopefully we can actually do that. So if we just climb down, let go. Oh my goodness, that was a big jump. Turn on our RCS. There we go. Then we can plant... A, a, let's just double check everything. Plant a flag on the moon. Right. Plant flag. Yes. There we go. Contract complete. Uh, site. Question mark. Plaque text. Where are we? Okay. Now, we've got to get back again. So, do we actually try and grab a piece of moon rock? Let's zoom out. What we got? There's nothing near us. There's a little cratery thing over there, but I'm, it's not what we're here for. Right then, let's try... Do a little jump, turn our RCS on, and get back on here without breaking any more solar panels. Grab. And board. Okay. So we came in from... Uh, which way did we come in? I don't know. Let's have a look at the map. There's the three craters there. We want to head that way around. Got to make sure that we launch off in the right direction, right? There's the three big craters. There's the three big craters. So we want to head that way. Towards that magical line. I could take a surface sample. Can, can an engineer do that? We can give it a go. Let's do that. We, you know what we can also do? We can take an EVA report and keep that If you don't have enough fuel, detach the castle. If it has engines and keeps the thing on the moon. What? Castle? Did I read that right? Um, not remove helmet. Take surface sample. We'll keep that. Right. Back on board. Lego boy, I have no idea what you're talking about. That did not make any sense to me. I'm sorry. Um, so now I want to make sure that I know which way we're going to go. So when I tilt the controls that way, it's trying to head this direction. So we need to rotate the craft if we can. So that we get a nice clean takeoff. 
And it does seem that the reaction wheels are allowing us to do this. Fantastic. There we go. Yeah, 120 science. We must not have been here before. There we go. Now we're leaning right into where we want to go. Right into where we want to go. Okay. Right, folks. I think it's time to take off and try and dock with the space station. We'll refuel. We'll fix the solar panels, maybe. And then we'll go to Minmus and see what we can do there. So, um, I guess... Throttle up and bend over to the right because that's where we're heading. We want to check that we're not going to go too far. Tutorial series on KSP? No, there's way too many tutorial videos out there on the internet already for KSP. I would not be adding any value to the good ones that are there. The only time I do tutorials is when there are either few or no tutorials already out there or the tutorials that are out there are either terrible or in uh, a language which isn't very common or if I feel like I've got something of value to add to them. So I don't normally do that. Right, there we go. We, uh, we've we managed to get an orbit uh, with the where the apex of our orbit is roughly where the space station is going to be. So I... I'm going to risk it a little bit and walk to here. You meant capsule, not castle. The capsule has no engines. It can't do anything. So there we go. Uh, if we put ourselves roughly in prograde and then just adjust it so that we're Whoa, steady. I'll show you the manoeuvring here. Oh, we can bring those landing legs in now. We don't need them. Oh, we didn't turn the landing lights on. Look, this Luna has little landing lights. Uh, Luna Lando uh, has got landing lights uh, and docking lights. I completely forgot about that. Never mind. Uh, right, let's put ourselves sideways. Using this. And then we will boost to try and create a stable orbit. Hopefully we'll have enough fuel left. Yeah, I mean, for me, the best, the tutorials that I liked the most were the Scott Manley tutorials. However, they're so old now compared to the changes that have been in the game. I'm not 100% sure I'd recommend them without checking them. Right, here we go. So there we go. We've got a stable orbit around the moon. It's not perfect, um, but we need the space station to catch up with us. Okay, so we're going to go space station set as target, and we're going to do a prograde burn here to push our orbit up above the space station. And then we're going to do a few laps. So uh, power is down to minimum. And then if we just warp round, you can see that each time we warp round, the space station gets further and further around because it's taken the inside track. And we can get a good idea of how many loops it'll take. Now, we could do a bigger loop. But it would mean that we use more fuel. And I don't want to do that. Fuel is very expensive at the moon. Okay, there's that. I think we might actually be getting close next time round. Yeah, here we go, look. Uh, one more loop. Oh, here we go, look. It's telling us that the next intersection with the space station is going to be a really close one. Uh, so if we go past it, so the space station just ticks over that line. Is that it? We can adjust that slightly by doing a slight retrograde burn, I think it would be. Let's see if we can get a closer intersection. Nope, that was a worse intersection. We need to go prograde. 
The capsule has RCS thrusters. That is true, it does have RCS as attached on there. I'm not sure if it has much RCS through, uh, fuel. It, the, the, technically, I suppose there are some engines. Technically. Right, it looks like the closest approach we're going to get is about 8 kilometers. But you know what? That's fine. Let's turn the. Oh, after the time warp, we'll turn the lights on. And all we've got to do now is dock back up with the space station. Which is there, I think. Uh, nope. That is actually where we just planted the flag. Not sure what that is. Where's the space station? There! There's the space station. So... We set our trajectory to retrograde in comparison to the space station. It's only 10 meters per second. There are a little bit more fuel efficient ways of doing it than this. But this is like, to me, like the easiest way. You just null out your relative velocities by going retrograde to your target. Then you point your vessel directly at your target Give it a little burn. And you can see that we're not going straight at it. We need to do some adjustments here. There we go. And at this distance, we're not going to hit it. The odds of actually hitting that is a little bit ridiculous. Uh, I'm going to make us go about 20 meters per second, I think. Because it's a long way to go. So just gently moving that around. Oops, steady. Steady. Right, so then in theory, we can just let time pass by as we get closer. And like I said, we're not going to hit it. We're just going to come relatively close to it. And then we need to try and get a bit more closer. Let's try that again. There we go. We're going in at 20 meters per second again. Yeah, Lego boy, I, I don't know. It might have been an automatic timeout from YouTube. I certainly didn't do it. There we go. There we go. We're 1.8 now. This has actually been a relatively poor approach, but our orbits were very different. They were. Our orbits were very different. So there's been some good corrections going on here. Okay, we're less than a kilometre away, so let's uh, see how that's going and get back to the chat. How far is Juna? I have no idea. Um, I have no idea. Again, look it up on the internet. It's, I mean, it's on the map. Uh, you know, you zoom out of the curbing system there and there's Eve, there's Moho, there's, du there's Duna on the opposite side of the sun at the moment. I mean... Distance is also relative. Um, okay, let's just fast forward a little bit. We're going to be very close this time. There we go.
What I might do is I might dock it on the end here because that's actually a really easy place to do from where we are. Um, I think we've got the RCS to do it as well. So let's turn our vessel around so we're pointing roughly at it. Uh, we need to push ourselves forward a little bit. Let's approach this at one and a half meters per second and shut the engine down. Let's turn RCS on and rotate the craft. Just got to try and get this bang on target. I think it's going to be a bit quick. So I'm going to slow us down to one meters per second. Turn off the SAS and RCS and there we go. That, that's a good docking. There we go. So Jesse Kaboom is back at the space station. Um, I will go and fetch the tug in between streams. So we're, we're all good. We're all good. I think there's some spare solar panels around here somewhere. I'm not sure. So now what we're going to do is we're going to use the fuel in the space station to refuel the lander before I forget. Because the last thing we want is the lander not to have any fuel. Now, this is something I want the chat to decide. Do we go to Juna? Uh, not Juna, sorry. Do we go to... Minmus in the in this TR 10 second stage and try and land it like it is or do we steal the landing legs from the lander and put them on the bottom what do you think what do you think chat let's move Jesse over so let's do transfer crew transfer To here did that work yes that worked uh, see we've got one vote for steal them yeah I, this this doorway should not be flapping around like that I don't know what's wrong with that There's, there we go target angle was wrong steal the landing legs I kind of think you're right, folks. I think we need to steal the landing legs. Easier without. Wow, says Catty. I mean, the engines are kind of shielded by this bottom section. We do need to land on there uh, to perform repairs to the miner. So this, this ship has to land on the surface. Quite a few people are saying go with the legs. Hmm. I'm not sure about that. You know what I am sure about? I'm sure it's time for a game giveaway. Would one of the moderators like to start one, please? Otherwise it will topple over. Yeah, I'm kind of thinking landing legs as well. Steal the engine? We don't need the engine. We've already got engines. It will... Yeah, it'll fall out. I think it might fall over without the legs. I'm almost tempted to take these engines off and store them somewhere. There we go. We've got, we got a new game giveaway going on for this war of mine. Head out to entry.masterhellish.net to enter the draw. You need to be logged in. And if you don't have an account, you can create one for free. Quick save. Thank you. <laughs> right then. Um, yeah. I mean, there's, the monopropellant on this needs recharging. Which I will do quickly. There we go. Where's it gone? There we go. No! Oh, I just sucked all the monopropellant out of that. <laughs> um... Yeah. 
I think the general consensus is people think we need the landing legs. And I'm inclined to agree. Um, so we will. See, look, we've even got spare solar panels here that we're not using from the initial launch of the core module. We could we could just move them. We don't need repair packs. Might need to bring an engineer here at some point. Right. What about monopropellant on this ship? Where are my monoballs? See, that one... Yeah, it's got quite a lot of monopropellant in it, and I don't think we'd need any more. Because it's, it's only for docking, and I don't think we're going to do any docking. Okay, let's get Jesse out. EVA on on EVA here. Let's let go. Get our RCS on. Try not break any solar panels. And just boop into that. Go into building mode, I think. We'll take the leg. Can we put it in our inventory? No, it's too big. There we go. We'll move it down the space station. I think that might be the only way we can do this. Made the space station wobble a little. It's too bad that these are just too big to carry around in our inventory like that. Come on, where are you going to go? There. Apparently we're going to go there. Right, hang on a second. Let's turn the SAS on. Uh, SAS. Yeah, that might help. Right then. Let's go back into building mode. Imagine doing that in real life. I think in some ways they kind of do. Now we need them up here. So we might be able to traverse this corner quite easily by popping them up here. There we go. Does the station have antennas? Yes. The station does have antennas. The station has one antenna. One big one. Don't know if it has any more than that. Looks like having SAS turned on is actually making things worse. Let's turn the SAS off. It can then just not wobble around like crazy. Right then. Let's go up to the middle here. Back into building mode. There we go. And then we just got to distribute these relatively easy, easily, evenly. Now we can actually just sit inside the engine bell, I think. There you are. Won't float away as much then. What are they like when they're uh, extended? Let's have a look. Can I extend that? Oh, I can't extend it because I'm not inside the ship. Maybe if I get inside, then I can extend it and have a look. There we go. 
And we can use that as a... Oh, you see, that's way too long. We don't want... Ah, uh, then again, we want some spread, don't we? Alright, back into building mode. Here we go. So we're putting it so they're all pretty much spaced at the same height. There we go. And I don't know if we can adjust the stiffness of the landing legs, but I would definitely like to adjust the angle of them. So I would like to... Whoa, not that. Can I undo? No. Oh my word. That is ridiculous. What on earth is going on? Is that? That is not correct. That is not correct. That's getting closer. I'm floating away. This is harder to do in space. Come on, get back inside. Get back inside the engine bell. There we go. Nice and safe. Right, let's try that again. Yeah, that's weird. It just seems to do whatever it wants to. I have no idea. Let's just try replacing them about again. You know what? I'm not going to mess around with that. I'm going to leave it. Yeah, most things are harder to do in space, that is sure. Okay, uh, well we've got the landing legs. I, I feel like this isn't good enough. I really do want to try and get these so that they splay. Like, it's definitely the red, right? But then I grab the red and it just goes crazy. Like, if I can get them to go in the... Oh, no, that's the RCS port. I need to get that back the right way around. There we go. Right. We managed to work our way out of the engine bell somehow. Let's fix this one. Right, that's it. Let's get back inside. That will either do or it won't. Famous last words. Come on, crew hatch, crew hatch. Come on, crew hatch. There we are, grab that. Get inside. Right, well at least we've got landing legs on it now. Um, that may or may not be a good thing. <laughs> get into the engine bell to be safe yes uh, so basically um, we're going to Minmus from the moon in a ship that's way too big for the job so let's do that now shall we uh, we're full of liquid fuel I think we've got loads of oh, monopropellant in the monoballs wherever they are they're not in there are they Monopropellant is in this section. Yep, yep, there's one. So we can, we'll fill that up. Ah, oh, I, I didn't press Alt. This is why I wanted proper monopropellant tanks. <laughs> you think you got to the moon once, so you're ahead of me. Yeah, this is what we're doing at the moment. This is a space station going around the moon. The thing is, once you've... I did it the wrong way again. Once you've got a load of infrastructure in place, things get easier. Like, 
we undocked a lander earlier and it didn't have any mono propellant in it so i was able to undock the tug get connected to the lander give it some mono propellant and then do the landing as originally planned if i didn't have that tug there at the space station we'd, we'd be have a big problem right i that i'm pretty sure it's only got it might have four tanks Oh, it's got three. It's got three. I'll uh, I'll fill up the last one. There we go. And then we'll... Uh, not from there. We don't want to take these monopropellant tanks with us. That would be a bad idea. We'll undock from here. There we go. So what we'll do, instead of using RCS or anything like that, we will rotate the vessel. So we're going to turn SAS on. All the engines are turned off still. Uh, we'll, uh, it's a good job because I did the wrong thing. There we are. We'll just rotate the ship. Looks like... I have no idea what these canards are supposed to be doing. The target angle of these... Uh, wonky so let me see if I can reset them there we go that looks like it's better okay and we can close the hatch what happened to the nose cone the nose cone is an um a mechanical hinged nose cone that goes over the top like that isn't that fantastic it's slightly off center for some reason well, that's a bit rubbish I think that might have been a problem during the saving I'll tell you what let's get Jesse out to fix it EVA Jesse this no not oh I didn't mean to do that <gasps> no! No! Oh no! We lost our. No I can't pick it back up. Well, bye bye, nose cone. Oh damn! I'm pretty sure it's only essential for takeoff anyway. Oh! We've got a repair kit in here, right? Yes, we have. Okay, Jesse, get back on board. Whatever you do, get back on board. We're going to have to come back and repair that at some time soon. But let's go to Minmus. I've had enough. <laughs> I've had enough of breaking things. Um, okay, so what we need to do to get to Minmus, I believe, is a retrograde. No, wait. A prograde burn roughly there. So we'll warp to that position. Space station is going to float away from us that we just smashed up a bit. There we go. We'll get prograde. The good news is, is that this is absolutely full of fuel. So we've got loads. It'll save weight. That is true. The only problem is I, I'm not sure I'm happy about re-entry of this vessel into the atmosphere with Kerbals on board and no nose cone like that. Maybe we need to do a test. Yes, we'll have to do a test with a test vessel. Anyway, before we bring them back. Let's now throttle up. To do that, we need to turn at least one of the engines on. So let's activate the main vac engines. Let's see what sort of orbit we can get. So we're pushing this orbit out away from the moon, and that'll fling us round the um, Kerbin. Put heat shields on it. That might help. There we go. Right, so we've got an orbit there. If I keep doing that, then the periapsis does come in. I don't think I want it to. I'll just leave it like that for a while. <laughs> the engines can act as a re-entry shield. I'm not so sure about that. It might... It's, it, this thing comes in sideways. We'll do a test. We will do a test. I'd rather send a ship up 
and back down again and see what happens. Right, so there's Minmus. To get to Minmus, we'll do a similar three o'clock job. So we'll time warp to here. And then we'll do a prograde burn once the craft has turned around. Looks like things are generally looking quite good. Okay. Now unfortunately, for some reason, and I don't know why, we don't actually get a delta V calculation on this vessel. No idea why, we just don't. So let's see if we can get some sort of Minmus um, jobby. We'll give it a go. So we'll come to about here on that orbit. So it's going to take us maybe a day, just maybe half a day to do that. And then we're going to try and twist this orbit. orbit. So I want the orbit to twist anti-clockwise. So we're going to hit the normal button and we're going to see if we can get it to go around. There we go. So you can see it's lifting. I suppose I really should set that as a target. Well, you can see the approach there, the distance between them. So we are missing considerably, but we can do some radial in and radial out to try and bring that in. I say missing considerably. I don't think we're missing ridiculously much. Okay, let's move that round. That's quite close. Um, but we do need to prograde, I think, to push that out. Fuel is still looking good. It's a heavy vessel, remember. There's a relatively close approach, isn't there? Now, was it radial out or radial in was using for this? Minmus is not an easy one. Uh, getting, to, getting to Minmus and hitting it is more difficult than the moon. But when you're there, it's easier to land on and stuff, so... I don't think your rocket will make it without heat shields. Uh, it has done before. It's just the nose cone I'm, I'm not sure about. There we go. There we go. We've got one. We've got an intersection. So there's the moon and Kerbin in the background. And if we look over here, here comes Minmus. And like I said, we're landing on Minmus. So it doesn't really matter which way we, we come flying in. I've got a funny feeling we always come flying in the wrong way compared to the direction of the space station. It's almost worth changing the direction of the space station sometime. So let's walk to our periapsis and put ourselves in a retrograde burn scenario. Doop. There we go. And let's see how low we can get this without causing ourselves too many problems. About 40, 40 kilometers. Sounds good to me. Let's walk to the other side. <laughs> um, ship's turning round. And full power to the engines. Let's keep an eye on that. We don't want to overshoot our mark. There we go. So you can see we've got a base there. We've got the digger lander there. In fact, we're flying right over the digger lander pretty much. So I think we're on a good trajectory here um, to actually get there, which is brilliant. We are going the wrong way around according to the space station, though. Of course. Oh, no. Retrograde, please. There we go. Retrograde. And then I want this to twist around a little bit. I want our periapsis to be right above the moon, uh, the uh, minor lander there. We want to land to it as close as possible. That's a little bit of a struggle think we might be able to do an adjustment whilst we're here so let's now 
do a retrograde. We'll see. We'll see about heat shields. Right, so then... Is that retrograde? There we go. So we're going to go about five kilometers above the surface. That should be fine to hit, hit to miss any mountains. I hope so, because we've got Kerbals on board. And then we need to rotate this ever so slightly anti-clockwise. So we'll hit the normal. And we'll see if we can bring this line up. Got loads of fuel. There we go. Right, ideally, I would like to land this in the daylight. I thought you were going to land the ship on the second moon. I am. That's exactly what we're doing right now. This is Minmus, one, uh, the second moon in the Kerbin system, and we are getting ready for our landing. The only problem is I'm not feeling comfortable about doing it in the dark. So what I might do is just give ourselves a little bit more height on the orbit by doing... Is it radial out or radial in? Let's have a look. Let's mark these two numbers on the screen. One's 6,000, one's 20. Yep, there we go. We can kind of borrow from one and add to the other. There we go. So now we're not going to hit anything and we're just going to keep flying around. Let's just fast forward until that lander is in the light it's in the middle of the dark there we're probably going to have to do some twisting there we go uh yeah right so we're actually in a good position here to do uh, a twist of the orbit it's going to require a relatively large amount of fuel but luckily minimus is quite small so a large amount of fuel goes a long way so look, full. if I full power that, you can see that we're twisting up and we're going to get over the lander site. We just want to be close by. We don't have to be on top of it. There we go. We'll do a little bit of a retrograde to get lower to it. And we're going to try and land right next to it. With a TR2 second stage. Correct me if I'm wrong, chat, but I don't think I've ever landed a TR2 on Minimus before. It's not designed for it. Right, here we go. Two Kerbals on board. Let's get the landing legs out. The new landing legs that we acquired at the moon. Oh, this is so dodgy. Uh, I guess we need a slight course correction from... Is it the normal... No, anti-normal, anti-normal. RCS on for a second just to get us moving quickly. Because we ain't got long before we land. There we are, I see you just twisting that orbit. There we go. That's much better. Head in the right direction now. Let's get retrograde on this. Plenty of fuel. Fuel is not going to be the problem. The problem is, is that we want to come straight down. Uh, which is going to be difficult. I think if we try and land in front of it, that might be best. It is pretty cool with the controller. I love doing it with the controller. I'm so glad that I did. Uh, let's just zoom in a little bit more. Oh, God, we need a little bit more, I think. I think we've got time. There we go. Get retrograde again. Right, here we go. We're going to do a full retrograde burn now and try and just almost stop horizontally dead. We're going to just... You can see that we're just going to do it, so we're going to drop out of the sky. We've got plenty of fuel. This is not the most fuel-efficient way of doing this. think that should do it you can see that we should drop down right next to the lander oh 
Please don't tell me we're going to land on top of the other lander. I mean, we're three kilometers up at the minute. Did you ever belly flop on a, a planet Earth in KSP? There's no Earth in KSP. But this TR2 does belly flop through the atmosphere um, to re-enter. That's how it re-enters. I'm just not... We lost the nose cone, so I don't know whether it's going to work like that. Um, I am pretty sure... Pretty sure we're not going to hit the lander. It's there. Uh... It's not too far away. We might need to get closer to be able to run maintenance on it. But what I'll probably do is I'll do a hop. So where's the shadow? There's our shadow. We are just one and a half kilometers up. So I'm going to bring our speed down to about 30 meters per second. We are slightly sideways, but that's okay. Coming down relatively quick, but I'd rather not stay in the air too long. Just give it a little bit more thrust, because the longer we hover like this, the closer we get to having an absolute straight down touch uh, touchdown. So we're going to get a little bit more speed up because I, I think I burnt a little bit too much of it off. This is a fictional solar system. There is no Earth. There's no anything else. So using real life uh, analogies or stuff like that. There are some things that are comparable. comparable. Okay. Just going to stability assist us down the rest of the way. 500 to go. We are quite a distance from the other lander, but I'd rather use the other lander to hop over to this one and get it close enough. Right, we're under 400 metres now, so I'm going to bring our surface speed down to about 10 metres per second. A little bit too much thrust. I could have throttle limited this one. There's our shadow. Landing lights are on. We don't have any, but they're on. We're actually starting to accelerate downwards a little bit, but that's fine. Look at our shadow. That looks fantastic, doesn't it? Going to try and reduce down to at least like 3 meters per second. Maybe even slower. We, we have got a slight sideways movement. So I'm going to turn the RCS on at the last moment, which should stop any of that problem, or at least help it when we land. Here we go. There they are. There's the RCS coming in just to help with that tip. We are a bit springy, but we're down. We're down. Yes. Quick save. And we've got more than half a tank of fuel, so we can get back to Kerbin, no problem. Over there, we've got the lander. I'm going to switch to it. That, that was a smooth landing. But to be fair, landing here is one of the easiest places to land. So this one has quite a lot of fuel. It does have a docking port on the bottom so once it gets into orbit we could do something about that I want to get it closer so that we could potentially fix some stuff and I'd rather jump this one so oh we've already got this one thrust limited I'm going to attempt to get it closer so let's have a look we are going to go that way right then here we go, folks. Uh, turn the engine on. Turn both engines on, not just one. That would be a disaster. The whole thing would just flip over and die. We're going to try and get closer over there now. Okay, there we go. And 
And then we go retrograde. Well, that's definitely closer. I don't know if it's close enough closer. Maybe we can try and get a little bit more out of it. Well, we're certainly heading towards the TR-10. We're quite high up, but we are going slowly. Here we go. Can we get another soft landing? Well, that's quite close, isn't it? You know what? I'm really glad we put the landing legs on the other one. I think it worked really well doing the landing legs. Right, let's switch back again now. And we'll get our we'll, we'll get our engineer in a minute. We'll just say what they got. So what's this? That's their parachute in their inventory. Um Jesse doesn't need a parachute. Uh Jesse can take Oh, I forgot about the science experiments. Oh, we'll do that afterwards. We'll do that afterwards. Can Jesse take uh, a cooler with them? I think that's a no. Yeah, it does appear to be a no. Although it fits in the slot. So does that just mean that they're over... Laden? Oh no, look, it didn't. What's Jesse? Oh no, no, we got it. Okay, so. Um, uh, let's see if we can. We need to. Be, uh, we don't want to smash into this. We don't want to smash into that. So let's go. Uh, let go, RCS, and. Up. There we go. Now, like I said, unfortunately, for some reason, I can't seem to get it set up very well. The RCS, that is. Um, oh, we fell over. Come on. Get up. There we go. So, in theory, I might be able to put more radiators on this and fix the problem. So, let's go into building mode. Get the radiator. And if we stick a radiator here, that might help. Uh, I don't know if it's going to draw more power that way. So, should we just put a few more radiators on and see how it goes? We just need to grab more radiators. Now, do I risk... Whoa, whoa, steady! <laughs> Nearly ended up in orbit. Let's just stand on the top. I'm sure I'll be able to access the inventory from the top, eh? Yep, there we go. Let's grab another one. Uh, see, it doesn't let me put it in the inventory when I'm there. So maybe I need to, like, get on board. What? No! Oh my goodness. Not in that mode. Did it. Soft landing. Come on. Back up to the top, please. Alright. Let's try and get back inside, I suppose. Right, it's grab F, isn't it? Oh, hang on. Can I get in through that docking port? Oh, no. That didn't work. <laughs> I'm not sure if I can get in through that docking port or not. I think the docking port has to be docked to something. Right? Crisis averted. Don't worry, everything's fine. Everything is fine. Right, let's get... Uh, Jess's backpack. And... 
it looks like when we're in here hang on a minute there's one in there already what I'm confused Jesse EVA let go and get out of there yeah um okay it's showing Jesse is having one so either way however it's working I don't mind so then build mode pop one on won't let me pop it on there oh there it goes Lego boy's got to go okay Lego boy thank you very much for coming about we'll see you soon let's get this RCS up Ooh. oh did we end the giveaway I don't think we ended the giveaway did we if we've still got a giveaway going uh, moderators can we can we end that giveaway while I put these bits on because we need to do a new giveaway Right, let's have a look. Board. No, not climb. Oh dear. Fantastic! Who's the winner of the giveaway? Antonego! I think you've won one before, haven't you? That's what happens when you enter lots of giveaways. Right. Uh, looks like Jess has picked another one up. Although I'm not sure where from. Is this a bug? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, so, let go, RCS, and over we go. There we go. We've got a winner of, of this is war. This war is mine. Can we have another giveaway? Yeah, let's do another giveaway. My target is to do a couple of giveaways every live stream, as long as we've got plenty of games in the goodie bank. Right. Ah, it's not in his. Okay, so it looks like it's in his pack. But it actually isn't in his pack. There's some sort of graphical glitch or bug there. So we've got a new game giveaway now for R Factor 2. Thank you very much to the mod moderators for sorting that out. Let's get on board. So when I click on here, it looks like there's one in there. But I don't think that... Oh, no! No! Oh, I accidentally activated the engine. I, I press the RCS thing is okay this is fine this is not a problem we just need to be careful and mindful of what the situation is get ready for coming back down and deal with it okay we're on our way down let's put a little bit of throttle into that That's a little unexpected, but it's okay. Put the RCS on. Just try and keep our balance. I mean, if anything, that was a better landing than the last one. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to turn that engine off. There we go. We won't have that problem again. Uh, right, let's check the situation because I can't remember what it was. Uh, did I put one of those on there? Let's have a look. Jesse Kaboom's definitely got one of them. As has Wizard Brandon for no reason whatsoever. Jesse Kaboom EVA. Yep, you've got one on you now. Um let go RCS and up and over I mean having the communication antenna on the um, on the ship in a position where you're boarding a hatch and getting out not a good idea not a good idea okay engineering mode let's get this attached there we go and we've got one more to fit on and then we're going to give it a go. If it runs out of power, we'll put some solar panels on. If it doesn't run out of power, 
Well, it's all fixed. Here we go, here we go, grab on. Board. I'm getting better at this. Um, look, I just increased the throttle there. I wasn't paying attention to the button I was pressing. Something weird's going on here with the inventory. I'm not sure what it is, but never mind. Uh, let go. RCS. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, well. You're on the solar panel. <laughs> it's not the best place to be. So, my theory about this lander was it was a bit of a fail because of... Uh, it overheating and the efficiency just dropping completely so if we put all these radiators on it maybe that won't happen there we go so now before we start this thing back up again let's get Jesse back into this the TR10 give it a go and then, then we've got to get all these people back home again. Which is interesting. I'm sure we'll be able to get this home. We definitely want to give it a test run. Right, okay. There we go. F5-ing that <laughs> before anything like the Kraken comes or whatever. So here we go. We're back on the digger. And this time... We're going to extend all of these radiators. Look at this. This is potentially a lot better. Um, the electrical charge is okay at the moment. Let's deploy these drills. There we go. That looks a little bit better, doesn't it? Hey? Eh? Cooling is currently at 12%. Right then, let's start the harvester. And it's at thermal efficiency of 100% and holding. And let's start this thermal harvester. Thermal efficiency of 100% and holding. And electrical charge is holding as well, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not sure, but I think we fixed it. So then, let's fast forward a little. It's still only doing 0 0.04 or a second. But at least it's now at 100% efficiency, right? Look at the ore going up. Top right hand corner of the screen. It was never going up that quick before. The only problem is, is if using this time warping is the dangerous thing where objects could just jump around and we might have to reload the game because physics in KSP. Five ore out of the 600. Six? We're 1% of the way there. Okay. Just gaff gaffers tape some refrigerators to it and it works. Well, essentially, that was the problem with the design of this vessel. It was overheating. Um, I guess guess keep going it's gonna run out of power overnight and the only way we can stop that is the batteries right like if we had more batteries we could do something about that but i don't like here we go we're going to come out of time dilation and see what happens both crafts hopped up a little bit okay um i don't think we can borrow any battery packs from this ship Let's have a look. I, I really should have brought battery packs with me to get us through the night. But never mind. What we'll do is we'll just start it in the day. We've already got 72. You would need like three times the current batteries. It's a relatively small battery that's on there, Brandon. Um, I'm not going to fly up to the space station and nick batteries off that or anything like that. So let's give this another roll. Another night cycle. A 
little hop but it looks like we're okay start the harvesters we're at 150 already this is what i wanted to do last time but it just didn't work start the harvesters I need to start whoa miss that one skip way past too much of the night time there I mean too much of the morning like as soon as it's sunrise I need to stop is that sunrise Oh, there we go. There we go. Because then power goes back on. Start the harvesters again. Just eat ice cream. I'm, I'm sure they brought in supplies. We're over halfway. We've extra extracted 75% now. Is that morning? Get there's morning. Get in the morning in the morning is the important bit, isn't it? I just realised we've actually got two massive radiators on the back of the TR10 second stage. Okay, let's see. Can we get all the resources we need in this day cycle? Not quite. Not quite. Start this. I mean, I must admit, I do like the mechanics here of being able to extract resources. Maybe we should put a refueling base somewhere. That's it. We're full, ladies and gentlemen. Look at the objectives. We acquired the units, we have the units on the vessel, we just need to land it on Kerbin. I'm pretty sure we put parachutes on this. So as long as it doesn't burn up in the atmosphere, which it might do. Um, stop the harvester, there we go. Retract the radiators. Mission half accomplished, yes. Now, in theory, we could actually leave those radiators hanging out as we're flying around. Retract the drill. There we go. Right, so what we need to do now is get both this and the, uh, the TR-10 in orbit. We might dock them to refuel. I don't know how... So this has only got 288 metres per second of delta V. I don't think that's going to be enough to get back safely. Um, and the whole thing's got to land as well. And it's going to be heavy. <sighs> Is there anything else I could do? I mean, we could give it a drogue shoot. Should we give it a drogue shoot? I mean, I could steal a drogue shoot from the TR-10. There's a drogue shoot on here that we don't need. Um, I guess we could... Oh, What could we do to help increase its survivability? We could... I don't know. I don't know. What, we, what did we bring with us? I bet I didn't bring anything useful. Oh, we need to deploy the science. We're slowly just stealing from the TR-10. Actually, we haven't stolen anything from the TR-10 yet. Let's get this science deployed first. Okay. Um, let's do... Um, so we need to open up this. Put these items of inventory back. And we'll need to put the... We'll get Brandon to set it up. So there we go. Wizard Brandon, EVA. And we'll get you to let go RCS. And we'll just do it at the foot of the spaceship. It'll be fine over here. Maybe in the light slightly. 
Okay, so then I guess we deploy the science like this. No, no, we do not. Um, that's a cargo app. We don't want the cargo app. Um, does it have to be an engineer? Maybe it, it. Maybe it has to be an engineer. Yeah, come on, Brandon, get back inside. Let's find out. Let's just nip in here, swap it over, get Jesse to EVA, and we'll give it a go. Yes, there we go. What did it say? Well, this part will only perform its function when deployed by a Kerbal. Oh, it needs to be deployed. Yes, of course it does. Okay, there we go. Let's set up this surface science because we haven't got a surface science base. We've got a base on Minmus, but it hasn't got this surface science stuff. So let's do that. Let's board. Grab the next piece. Um, which is whatever that is. There we go. That was quite close, that. Oh, it's empty. What happened there? All right, we'll go back again. I'd, if you know what happened there, folks, let me know. Right, moderators, how many people has entered the game giveaway? How many people have entered the game giveaway? Because I think it's about time to end the game giveaway. Uh, board. Right, let's have a look. What happened there? Uh, oh, it's the, it's the phantom item. The phantom item is in the inventory. Let's get rid of that. Uh, swap it over with Jesse. One person entered the giveaway. Okay. As soon as a second person enters the giveaway, we'll draw it. Okay. Let's deploy this. There we go. We'll get what we'll do is we'll get Brandon down to deploy it all, I guess. Oh my goodness, get down. Too high. Way too high. Please don't smash the antenna. We kind of need that. There's no pilot on board. Although we have got repair packs. So I think we would be able to fix it. Hang on. How is the game giveaway? Banana oh, egg rebleated it. <laughs> I see. I th I thought that was the bot again, but it wasn't. Um, let's get the power item in there. And EVA again. You just re Yeah, I, s I worked that out in the end. I did work it out in the end. Oh, we landed on the equipment. There we go. Let's pop that down. Fantastic. I think there's only one more thing to put down, but I could be wrong there. Let's have a look. Um, no, I am wrong. There is two. So it looks like when we place something down, it's not actually placing it down. I'm not I'm not really sure what's going on there.
But it is placing it down. That doesn't seem right. There we go. Get it the right way around. <laughs> Oh dear. Up we go. Turn the RCS back on, please. Try not to crash into any solar panels on the way. Kind of need them. Right, and now I'm pretty sure this is the last piece. So it's just whatever that is. Let's get that down there. Yeah, we've got three repair packs and whatever that science thing is there. Someone has to join. That's right. One person has to join the giveaway. If you join the giveaway right now, you will have a 50-50% chance of winning. How good is that? Hey? Anyone can enter. You just need to be registered on the website to do so and logged in. And doing that is free. There we go. So all the surface equipment is now deployed. Come on, get back in. And now we're just going to EVA Brandon. To see if Brandon can set it up. So we'll just pop Brandon there. Just do a quick save. And then can Brandon... Uh, well, maybe Brandon can plant a flag. Why not? Let's do an EVA report from... Bl oh, don't, don't remove helmet. EVA report. We'll keep that experiment. We'll plant a flag. Why not? Uh, min deployed science. Sigh. Oh, it's all gone funny. That's fine. And this can Brandon can say, I am back again. There we go, somebody's entered the giveaway, so let's find out who the winner is. May as well take a surface sample while we're here, we'll take that with us. Who's going to win that giveaway, eh? Right, can I just stand next to this stuff and like... How... Do I have to stand right, right on top of it to be... I can't... It's been a... Oh, that isn't deployed properly, is it? Oh, I don't think any of this is. I'm not sure, but I think these objects are just on the ground and haven't been deployed. Oh, it's doing something. Oh, I, I, I don't know what to do. Uh... Fantastic! Okay. Can't remember. The the winner of the giveaway is Jackamack. Congratulations, Jackamack. That game that you won, I hope you enjoy. You won R Factor 2. Um Can somebody help me? I I don't know. This doesn't seem to be anything that I have the ability to resolve. Who's Jacko Geld is a pilot, so there is a pilot over here. Maybe Jesse has to do something, because Jesse's an engineer. Come on, Jesse. You get down there with Brandon. See if you can do anything. Right, what's this? Actually, while you're here. You may as well plant a flag. And you also may as well... Oh, um... Yay! I am here too! Uh, take a EVA report 
and a surface sample. When they get back into the pod, they'll probably cancel each other out, but never mind. I think your power unit has to be deployed by the engineer. Okay, let's have a look. So that is the power unit over there. This is my engineer. Okay, let's try picking it back up. We can't. Dropped reminder. This part will only perform its function when deployed by a Kerbal. So it's been dropped. And I can't pick it up again. What if I give Brandon my jetpack? What if I drop it on the floor? There we go. Right, I picked it up. Take surface sample, re review sample, review report. So maybe I need to be out of the building mode. And then do... Deploy there we go. Needs to be deployed. Not it's not done with construction. You click on the Kerbal and click the tiny little deploy arrow. I'm glad I was able to figure it out. To me, the hint... Why can't I pick that up? Maybe I'm too close. The hint was... That uh, it just fell over when I tried to pick it up. Why can't I? Can I pick that up? Yeah, I can pick that up. Why can't I pick this up? Is it because it fell over and now it's now half in the surface? It's not letting me! It's not letting me do these things! Uh, what about if I use the translate tool? Exit, exit construction mode. Let's save. No, I don't seem to be able to pick them up. I don't know why. But I did the others. Um, we don't need a nav ball in this view. Hmm, is it... Hmm, let's try moving away from this. Go back to the tracking station, load back, load in, and see... Try Brandon. That's an interesting point. Um, Brandon should be able to pick that back up. So let's just go down to Wizard Brandon and fly Brandon. Okay, here we go. We're back on the surface. It looks like nothing has exploded. So some of these are deployed. Brandon doesn't have the building capabilities, so no, it can't be Brandon to pick him up. Has to be... Jesse. Go into building mode. Okay, let's go pick our backpack back up. And then maybe we can go and fetch the spares from the from the ship. Whoa, he jumped. 
Jesse jumped and it made it big. Right, what do we need? Uh, we need the power. Why is Jesse not looking in that direction? I'm not sure what's going on. Never mind. Something weird's going on here. Grab! Board. We need to move up a little bit. 